Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're in the data center not because we have to but because it's nice and quiet out here um, power prices has gone through the roof here in or in Denmark and I think parts of Europe as well and therefore I've been shutting down a lot of stuff because uh, even though I don't run very much when I'm not doing videos about it well I was running a little bit more than my wallet thought was a good idea so I thought that I should well wanted to talk about how to reduce your power costs if you still want to play around with data center and server and stuff and um, you can of course buy a very small server consumer well something like a tiny Lenovo machine here and, and make it into a server but there are also possibilities to to lower the power usage of power hungry data center equipment like this and uh, yeah I don't have all the answers for this so I would very much encourage you to write in the comments what you have done to try and save power in these so difficult times where it has gone through the roof we had power prices just under a dollar per kilowatt hours when it was worse at that point it's no fun no more so I went around the house and I unplugged stuff that I well this charger is not charging anything right now so <laughs> unplug but we IT nerds we have some stuff that we really want to have power 24 7 and 24 7 is kind of where it hurts because if you're just gonna turn something on during the weekend and have some fun with it doesn't matter how much power it uses it can use one kilowatt an hour well you're having fun hopefully so one dollar an hour well you don't get much fun for one dollar an hour anywhere you might have to go to a very far away country never mind <laughs> well so my setup here I have actually already been been a little bit cheap when I have been um, connecting 24 7 equipment so I don't have a whole lot that I need to run I have my 24 7 server which is currently the newest server that I have uh, it might not be the most power efficient but it's definitely where I would get the most performance for the money and that is a good example you, um, you might have something you need to run then make sure that it can do what it has to do and then some don't run some old power hungry equipment if you have better stuff available make sure that it's the best stuff that is doing the 24 7 work so I could I could put on 50 more virtual machines on this server if I wanted to I don't need to I don't have 50 more virtual machines that I need to run so this is running more or less idle so the processors can go down in speed I could probably take one of the processors out but but then it becomes a hassle and, and I also need to make sure that there are no PCI ports on that processor etc but I did also put in very big memory blocks instead of filling it up with small memory blocks yeah okay this is not the smallest memory block but this is a 16 gigabyte memory block and I believe that I have 64 gigabyte memory blocks in there and so for each of those memory blocks that I have in there I would need four of these so for a rule of thumb I would expect these to use about five watts each so instead of and it doesn't matter if it's an 8 gigabyte or a 256 gigabytes they use roughly about the same amount of uh, power so the 64 gigabyte blocks that I have in there I believe I have 256 gigabytes of memory in there so I have four blocks of 64 gigabytes in there so I, if I had 16 gigabytes in there and I needed all that RAM I would need to have 16 blocks in there so this way I am kind of saving 12 blocks of RAM times 5 ish it's just a rule of thumb they can use more they can use less so um, and that's a lot of power and that's 24 7 power I'm not entirely sure if the RAM blocks uses that amount of power all the time or if it's only when it's doing a lot of work I've never tested that so RAM is a good example where you can do an investment and save money over time because you have larger RAM blocks they use less power 
and you have more room for expansion see it that way too the same thing goes with hard drives really um, it looks really cool if you fill up the server with hard drives in the front and 500 gigabyte hard drives on each of them and they're blinking and mm, looks wonderful but each hard drive uses I would say approximately 8 watts um, and that adds up so if you have like I have some servers that can take 16 hard drives 8 times 16 I can't do that in my head it's too many watts make sure you're using some larger hard drives so you don't need as many you of course need the redundancy and resiliency uh, that you need but take power consumption into consideration when you're selecting your hard drives and the number of them and so on I did that up here on my NAS box the NAS brand that we don't talk much about because I'm still <clears throat> angry with them I have eight bays in there I'm only using four of them but I have put 10 terabytes hard drives in there when I created it and at the moment I'm actually replacing them with 14 terabyte hard drives so that I can have as few as possible hard drives running 24 7 in my NAS box so I only have uh, four drives and they're in a RAID 5 which most people will say that's unsafe but yeah I have another one in the living room that I only turn on once in a while and then I copy stuff over so those 10 terabytes that I'm taking out of here I'm putting those in the other NAS where they're only running a little bit when I turn it on and copy over my backup so in there it doesn't matter as much uh, I have actually fully populated that one with Eight drives and some of them are four terabytes those are the ones that I'm replacing each time I take out a, a 10 terabyte here I haven't gotten very far it's been a while since we've done a video on, on that so yeah I should um, I should go and invest in another 14 terabyte at some point so that I can continue this and and that is more or less so that I can keep the number of discs down at four as long as possible probably when I'm done replacing everything with 14 terabytes well maybe 20 terabytes is at a price where I'm comfortable getting them who knows the same goes with the PCI Express cards that you can put inside of your server um, sometimes if there is nothing connected to them they won't use much power in there but very often they will be powered on and ready to go all the time and they will use a heck lot of power and well these are one port fiber channel cards and there might be a very good reason for having one port fiber channel cards in there but let's say this is a regular network card well you can get one of these with uh, four ports on it and it doesn't use four times as much power as one with with one port of there's a big difference between these so this these would use a lot more power than this one but you get the drift power efficiency you get a lot more connections for your power if you pick a card well there's more ports available then again if you don't need all these ports it might be a good idea to to not have them because they do use a little bit more power than one with just one port or two ports here here are two cards this is two ports and this is four ports and yeah um i haven't measured how much power they use you could be lucky that this one uses less power than this one but but I would expect that the most powerful one with the four ports will use a little bit more than this one with two ports but well this one might be two generations older than this one and maybe it's the opposite so inside the servers there are the CPUs naturally and those are some power hungry buckers you can go and take one CPU out if you have two and you don't need to I talked about that just a little bit ago but you can also in the BIOS of the server go in and configure it to low power consumption mode something 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 they they it's called different stuff on different servers make sure that the server prioritizes low power usage over high performance it can still do high performance it is just in normal operation it will use as little power as possible and then if it needs to it will ramp up the power where if you set it to maximum performance it'll just be ready all the time I'm so ready I'm good to go and you might not need that it might take a split second longer but it could save you a lot of money in the long run especially at one dollar a kilowatt hour so beside the server itself you have well you have the networking 
You might have an internet modem. I have one. I have fiber optic coming in and that goes into this fiber optic box and then it goes over to the router. Um, I, my router is virtual on my 24-7 server. Very power efficient way to do it because the server is always on so that uses the power anyway. And now it's also running a PFSense in a virtual machine. Uh, which I've just given a network port out so it has its own network port coming in with the internet and then it goes through a virtual switch and then the router and then it's routed out to the network so I don't have an extra box um, I have the, the fiber optic modem that I never can remember what it's called I'm sure you're gonna leave that in the description you always do and oh yeah that's what it's called so in these awful power times I can highly recommend that I would really love to get rid of the fiber optic modem back there, but the internet, the ISP, they use that box to limit whatever I can do on the internet. So if I bypass that, I could have TV and stuff that I'm not paying for. Yeah, they are afraid that I'm gonna watch the TV, um, even though I don't watch TV much. <sighs> Never mind. Not that I haven't looked into it and I know that I need a special SFP to put in the back of my server so that it could take the signal directly from the from the from the outside if the ISP finds out they will most likely want to shut down my connection they are so afraid of me watching their TV um then you have switches and uh, I would highly recommend oh, not running these kind of switches 24/7 uh, this is fine for a weekend warrior if you're just gonna play around and do some uh, some Cisco work. But this is a power hungry sucker. It um, it will drain your account. I believe some of these uses as much as a good server. Yeah, we don't want that. So power efficient switches is available. I use Ubiquiti switches myself and they are actually pretty power efficient. They don't use that much power and that's very lucky because that wasn't what I was looking for when I was buying the switches. I wanted the affordable 10G at the time and then I was just lucky that the switches actually also are pretty limited in the power usage. I have a 16 port 10 gigabit switch back there and I have a um, 48 1 gigabit switch with four ish with some 10 gigabit uplink ports i've done review videos on them i don't need to remember it i can just go back and see my video uh, <laughs> that's the excuse of having a bad memory i have actually been thinking about that i should shut that 48 port switch down and just use the 10 gigabit one um, so that i only needed one switch uh, because it, they do use power and it is kind of a lot of power I believe it's on the good side of 40 watts that a switch like that uses. Correct me if I'm wrong, I might be. So uh, yeah, that could be something that I could uh, do in the future. Um, bypass one of the switches and have that one off. And then when I need to do something where I need some additional ports, I could just go and turn it on. And then I could run the switch while I'm running or doing video work on something that needs additional ports. And then when I'm done, I could just shut that off and that would actually be quite fine. I'll put this back on the shelf. It's for sale if you have the money for the power for it. Server CPUs that are low power is actually also available for the model two and three of the Lenovo X3650, model two and three. And uh, there is the L series available and they are for low power. So they are way more efficient with the power usage so they're way more efficient with the power usage than the other processors they're also not as fast as the fastest of the other processors but in everyday operation they use a lot less power and it's only at the very high end that they kind of lose out a little bit the frequency is typically a bit lower you lose some max performance there but you gain some value in your wallet yeah all these high-end enterprise servers they usually have two power supplies in the back and there you can also save a bit of power if you're not running anything that is really that important that you can't handle losing uh, the server if a power supply fails which is normally 
why you would have two power supplies. It will be the power supply failure that you want that redundancy and resiliency for. And admit it, power supplies, they don't die every day. So uh, you can power the server with just one power supply. And the extra power supply, I believe you save another 40 watt. A newer system, I would expect a little bit less. Older system, yeah, 40 watts just for having a power supply and standby would be pretty normal. So here in Denmark, you can pay the power uh, at a specific rate or you can pay the, the actual price of it. And we have this app. Uh, if it sees me, it won't focus on this. Electricity prices here. And at the moment, it, it's actually the cheapest that it has been for quite a while. It's down at two crowners. Oh, this is... Oh, that is now while I'm filming, so that's really low. But you can see the red prices. As soon as we hit evening here, it goes into the red. And now it's five crowners. And, well, about seven crowners is a dollar. So it's not uh, as high as it has been. And they uh, predict the future here, what, what the prices are going to be. So at the moment, it's not that bad. But usually the power itself is a few cents. So... Um, here is the lowest, the average, and the highest. And down here we get the, there is the electricity itself, then there's the transport of it, and then there is taxes. So yeah, we pay a lot of taxes for our, our electricity. And this price is for the current price. So right now it's very cheap. Let's go to when it's gonna be very high or higher. There, you can see it's the, uh, the transport and the taxes are the same but the price of the electricity has gone up by multiple times so uh, just go back you can see that again there those two prices are the same the electricity price has gone way down with that one so yeah with prices like this you want to save every watt I would very much like to read in the comments below how you find ways to save on your enterprise equipment I don't want to read about how you just replaced your server with a PC. That's not interesting. It's interesting how you are still using enterprise equipment, but saving on power. Anyone can take a PC and call it a server. That's not what I'm after. I would very much encourage you to put that in the comments below if you have some nice tricks for me so that I can save some more on my power bill. And uh, well, if you need to go and purchase some new equipment, I can highly recommend Bargain Hardware bargainhardware.co.uk in the United Kingdom and if you use the checkout code MYPLAYHOUSE you get 5% off of your purchase and that's small letters I'll leave it in the description and sometimes it's way more interesting to use some money to get some more power efficient equipment than just keep paying the power company it's more fun to get new stuff than putting money into old stuff but never mind thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye